Thanks for tuning in to Believe, where we are discussing positive topics on true success, health and wellness, money and business, world news, and tonight I'm start starting you guys off with our universe. Make sure to check us out on our website at believelovesyou.com, YouTube forward slash Believe Loves You, and like us on Facebook at Facebook forward slash Believe Loves You. So again, tonight I'm going to start us off on our universe, and I am Karen Laffey. And you are? <laughs> okay, so back into <laughs> our universe. So if you haven't heard already, next month we are having a total solar eclipse. On August 21st, 2017, people across the United States will see the sun disappear behind the moon, turning daylight into twilight, causing the temperature to drop rapidly and revealing massive streamers of light streaking through the sky around as a silhouette around the moon. On that day, which has been dubbed the Great American Total Solar Eclipse, will darken the skies all the way from Oregon to South Carolina, a long stretch of land that's about 70 miles wide. So what is this solar eclipse, do you say? Well, Sol, which is the sun, eclipse is getting darker, covering it. When the moon is actually passing between the earth and the sun, so the word would be sun, moon, earth. Sun, moon, earth. When the moon is passing between the two, it actually passes in the same, the same path where it actually covers the entire sun and leaves it with the rays of the, the sun rays that you can actually see, which will actually blind you if you're not looking at it when it's in its totality. When it's in its totality, it won't blind you, but you're not supposed to be looking at it anyway. So always wear solar eclipse, glass, solar eclipse glasses wherever you go and do not look at the sun. But um, what is going to happen here? Again, it's going to turn daylight into twilight. And what experts are saying is that the loss of sunlight actually drops the temperature 10 degrees more. It also changes the lighting so that the shadows look sharper on the ground so that it's possible to see the actual individual hairs on your head in the shadow. That's pretty crazy. During the total eclipse, sky watchers might be able to see stars during the daytime or perhaps catch a glimpse of the planet Mercury, which is actually really difficult to see on a normal day because of how close it orbits the sun. Some states like Illinois, Missouri, Tennessee, and South Carolina are closing schools for the day, fearing that the few hours after the totality, some surveyors may look into the sky and burn their eyes out. So they're trying to do the best they can to keep the children and whomever else safe at home. Or are they fearing something else? I mean, if you think about it, the sun being blocked out, I mean, who knows what else could that could cause any problems with. But anyways, we're not going to go there. <laughs> so who can see it? A lot of people. Everyone throughout the United States, in fact, everyone in North America, plus South America, Africa, and Europe, they'll all at least see actually um, partial clips, not the totality of it, but partial. Because um, to actually see the total eclipse or the totality of the eclipse, you actually would need to be within that path of totality is what they're calling it, which is relatively a thin ribbon that will cross across the United States from west to east. Um, the first point of contact is actually going to be on Lincoln Beach in Oregon at 9.05 a.m. The totality begins there at 10.16 Pacific, uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time. And then over the next hour and a half, it will cross throughout the remainder of the 14 states on the path, ending near Charleston, South Carolina at 2.48 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. From there, the lunar shadow leaves the United States at 4.09 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are within that ribbon, there are certain local libraries that are actually giving out or supplying uh, uh, special glasses for you to be able to look at the eclipse and not burn your eyes, remember that. <laughs> but you can also create your own where you can see the reflection um, throughout the box and how to um, 
create this little, like, it almost looks like a Google box. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that with the VR. It's a little cardboard box that you can actually make, cut a window in and put a piece of aluminum foil on the outside and a hole in it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it. I'm, I'm going to make one. And rather than try to blow your head off with this, this imagination of all this crazy information I'm trying to tell you about what this box looks like, I'm going to make you one and I'll bring it. Because this isn't going to happen until next month anyway, so I have time. So anyways, a lot of people are saying that if you are going to experience this, you are going to experience somewhat of a freaky, I guess, freaky, time warpy, space kind of feeling. And what I mean by that is, what they're saying is, depending on where you're surrounded and the totality comes near, you're going to experience strange things. Strange things. You'll notice a re resemblance to the onset of night, though not exactly night, so the twilight thing. Areas are much larger in the sky near the sun, and they all lie around the horizon. And shadows even look different. Remember earlier they were saying that the shadows are going to be so intense or in detail that you can actually see the hairs on your head. So the shadows are going to be in high def, if you can, say, if you can think about it that way. Um, also, something that was mentioned is that usually any breeze will dissipate, and the birds will stop chirping. It's quiet. And a 10, 10 to $15, 10 to 15 Fahrenheit degree drop in temperature is not unusual. So could you imagine you're, you know, you're standing in the, in the path of totality with your glasses, of course, ready for it to come. And all of a sudden, within minutes of it arriving, you just feel the sense of change. You feel that the, the sky is getting darker and your eyes are getting clearer because the shadows are getting more crisp and HD. And then all of a sudden the temperature drops. I don't know about you, but you, I don't, you know, they have their sh ghost hunter shows and movies, but you know what happens when the temperature drops. Something creepy, you know, creepy feeling. It's not natural for things to, to, to immediately change like that that quickly. So to me, that's pretty freaky. But aside that, I, I always like to see meaning in things or maybe like if there's a symbolo symbology um, associated with it or um, a story that goes along with these astronomy things because, it, I mean, the, the, the solar eclipses have been tra tra being traced and tracked from ancient Greece to ancient China. Um, one record recording in ancient China described one of the solar eclipses as the sun being eaten. And I mean, can you imagine? I mean, that's kind of a pretty creative thought because, you know, back then we don't have a way to really describe things of, you know, so the sun being eaten would be perfectly describable, I guess. <laughs> but what I found a little deeper in the in the uh, aspects of, like I said, symbology, or is there a meaning, deeper meaning with this, since it's been tracked for decades. But the thing that mostly is talked about is, you know, how we're, just this, the, the actual nuance of it is how it doesn't happen but this many times of the year, or you know, it, it's just like this beautiful thing that everybody needs to participate in and experience because it's, it doesn't happen all the time. What I found was, in my research to find out deeper meaning for that, was generally the, the new moon symbolizes planting new seeds and starting afresh. You know, we are essentially working on a blank canvas of the dark moon where our ideas can gestate into a new moon soil. Basically, Anytime you see like a new moon, again, it, it replicates a, a new change or a rebirth type thing. And what they're saying, but with a solar eclipse, the moon comes between the sun and the earth, therefore interrupting the flow of energy, causing a disruption. So this isn't something that's natural, you know, like when a clock ticks and all the, you know, the cogs and the wheels move. It's just like this natural thing and this natural motion of how the clock keeps ticking and it, you know, it gives you the right time. It's always in, in sync. And even if you put it in a room with other clocks, eventually they're going to become in sync. And that's another topic. So my point in saying that is with the solar eclipse, it's as though 
something is being disrupted. Nature is being disrupted. And for a split moment, I think it's like for a few minutes, this energy is giving you a moment to take the time to look at whatever it is that's going on in your life, whether it be to break a habitual habit, a relationship, or whatever. It's basically that moment in space and time that you have to reflect to clean your slate and start all over. Just the whole description of what it even does, like the, how it, the very air changes around you and the loss of, of, of sight, of sunlight, and the drop in ten- temperature, like that's just kind of like that whole zero gravity or sight, or it's not sight, but sense deprivation type of thing where it's just you and this space where you have a moment to think clearly without interruption. I mean, I could I can go into all of it. There's so much stuff that's really deep, pretty deep. But long story short, to give you the gist of it, is that it's symbolized as taking the time in the dark to see yourself. Are, is there anything that you can get rid of? Is there anything that you need to do over? Is there anything that you want to do different? Look at that and begin anew and start again. You know, the solar eclipse is very good at showing up any imbalances that you have. A solar eclipse can bring an awakening or shocking revelation that can rock you to the core. And this is referred to as a cosmic reboot. Pretty interesting name. Which it aims to balance the left and the right brain hemisphere and therefore consciousness so that you're not lopsided. You know, some of the things that we've been talking about, you know, consciousness or being mindful or being aware or present in, in, in the present moment. I mean, this speaks of it as well, that when you have that clarity moment, it's a cosmic reboot. Okay, I'm going to reset. Am I, am I thinking too analytically here? Am I thinking too um, non-analytically? Am I, am I too in the clouds and not with my feet on the ground type of thing? You know, some people have an equal hemisphere strength, but the sides are disconnected. So they are flipping from one thing to another. Does that sound familiar? I mean... How many times have we not been able to decide on something or have been indecisive about something because we're, we have the ability to have equal hemisphere strength, meaning that I can do the numbers and be analytical and I can do this, I can be creative, I can be compassionate, I can be um, intuitive, but I can also be strategic and numbers. You know, we, we're strong in that, but it's the, it's the connecting it's not connecting, it's disconnected, that back and forth, back and forth, rather than that harmony or that balance. Many artistic and spiritual types are right brain dominant, and thus sometimes it can be hard to ground themselves in 3D reality. Me, for myself, I am a creative and I'm also a spiritual person. And to me, that totally makes sense because you are heavily dominated in the positive and the spiritual. And the reality is that life isn't always about that. Everyone, every situation, every person, everything, every experience is not going to be exactly like you. So even though that's where we live, we live in that free spirit, we live in that compassionate, love, artistic mind, in order to survive, I shouldn't say survive, but in order to be of the world or to get things done or to be functional, you know, you have to have skills on the logic side as well. What, so you don't get taken advantage of, so that you're not being bamboozled or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's it would be awesome if we could just, you know, trust everyone, which, I mean, we should trust everyone in the beginning anyways, but there also has to be that intuitive side that works with the strategic side or that logical side that says be smart love but be smart be kind but be smart you know that's it so whether you are with someone who didn't treat you well or wanted to be with someone or you want to you have some toxic relationships in your life this is also a time for you to take a look at what do you have going on in your life you know are there some people around you that maybe 
aren't good for you. And so use this. It would be a good thing to use this solar because okay, this is the day that I'm going to m focus on putting a list together or coming up with things that maybe I'm not happy with in my life or maybe yeah, that aren't good for me. And then maybe this will be kind of good for you to, to use this for yourself as a, as setting a date for yourself to meet with yourself, to create the life for yourself. <laughs> but you know, this is, I mean, this is ancient talks. This is ancient recording. So this obviously means something. And at the end of the day, the reality is, if, and none of this stuff has anything to do with this, this stuff is only going to make you better anyways. And what I mean by that is getting rid of toxic people, making better chains and breaking habits. Those are all good for you. So why not? 